We lived in a garage. You have to clean out your stitches, you're still bleeding, you have to make sure you're not getting blood everywhere. A new nurse comes rushing in. Our mattress was just on the ground. Wow, she was that hungry and I couldn't even feed her. It was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. Yep, that was crazy. Hello everyone, it's Letty and welcome to my channel. I have been wanting to talk about my postpartum experience as a teen mom for a while now. So while I have the opportunity, while the kids are napping and the sun is out, grab a coffee, you're gonna need it. <laughs> Here's a story of my postpartum experience as a teen mom. So I'm going to pick up exactly where I left off in my last video, where I talked about my birth of my first daughter when I was a teenager. And I'm just going to pick up exactly where I left off at that video. I'll link it below if you haven't seen it. So after she was born and my husband had cut her cord and they like weighed her and measured her and everything, they then bottled her, had my husband hold her. That's right, I did mention that he threw up. So, yes, my... Mom and my husband did get to hold her, and then as they brought her over to me, I had to unswaddle her and then put her on my chest and do skin to skin. And everybody left the room, so it was just... I think my husband even left the room at one point too, and it was just me and her. Which was shocking because I was expecting a nurse to come by because it was my first baby. I was just kind of expecting somebody to make sure that I had like latched her properly and that she was like eating and good out of the womb and everything, but nobody did that. So that really kind of caught me off guard. And thankfully I'm a crazy person and spent my entire pregnancy researching everything I needed to know for postpartum and breastfeeding and newborn care. So I knew exactly how to latch her. She latched perfectly and we were able to enjoy our golden hour, just the two of us. That was the best part of the entire experience <laughs> was our golden hour. Now, after we finished nursing, it was almost like an hour after I gave birth, so they wanted to move us from labor and delivery over to our postpartum ward. So she was put in her bassinet, and my husband went with her to like wheel her over to our room while the nurses helped me like get dressed, get in the wheelchair, bring me over to postpartum. We made it over there. I was able to get some breakfast, finally, because I hadn't eaten in almost 24 hours, which sucked, by the way. Don't ever do that during labor. Now, with the postpartum ward, we did have to share a room with someone else. So, the first day that we got in there was her last day, and then the second day we stayed, we had the room to ourselves, thankfully. So when we got in the room, we were trying to be quiet to not, you know, wake her and her baby up. Um, but unfortunately, the light that was above my hospital bed was broken and it wouldn't turn off. So we weren't able to have, like, darkness to go to sleep, which really bothered me. Because I, was found, I found it very difficult to sleep with that light on. And for the life of me, I couldn't get it to turn off no matter what since it was broken and the chair that was next to the bed where my husband would sit apparently it would like fold out into a bed but it was broken and didn't do that the postpartum room only had like a toilet room and a sink there was no shower i was not able to shower until i got home which really bothered me i felt disgusting and sweaty and swollen and nasty and i hate hospitals they're, i know they're clean but it just makes you feel dirty you know, being around like sick people and stuff, so. I, I just felt nasty. I really wanted to take a shower, but couldn't, and that was frustrating. Now, due to the amount of Pitocin and drugs that they had pumped me full of that I did not need when I was in labor, if you're confused, please feel free to go back and watch my birth story. It has so much information that will help explain this story. Now, due to the Pitocin, which I did not know because there was zero informed consent during my labor and birth. 
my milk was not coming in because Pitocin not only gives baby jaundice, which most babies are born with jaundice, Pitocin really increases their billy ribbon and makes them very much jaundice. Also makes it very difficult for your milk ducts to produce milk and have your milk come in. So, unfortunately, I was not producing colostrum the way Maisie needed me to, so she was just crying in hunger and I was getting stressed out because I'm like trying to feed her and like she's latching and she's not getting anything, so she's frustrated and doesn't feel good. I'm kind of freaking out, I'm confused, I don't know what's going on. I'm, there's no lactation consultant to help me. The nurses, unfortunately, were not that helpful. Except for in the morning during shift change, a nurse came in, took one look at her, and goes, baby is jaundice, I'm gonna go talk with doctor. Leaves, comes back a minute later and says she needs to go under the light. Takes Maisie and brings her down to the nursery under the lights while I was crying in the hospital bed and the nurse got me a hand pump so I could pump while she was in the nursery. They had to supplement her with formula because I wasn't really producing any milk, unfortunately. It sucked. <laughs> that was the first blow. It's not even like 24 hours old. We haven't even left the hospital and like I'm already feeling I can't even feed her. She already has to leave. Like that was the worst feeling in the world. And along with the epidural, and I've heard a lot of women say this, when you get an epidural, it does block your nerve endings. So you just, your brain doesn't register the pain yet, right? Well, right after you give birth, they then remove your epidural because you no longer need that medication. So that means you have like an hour to two hours after birth where you still have all the medicine in you and you don't really feel anything, which means the second that that medication runs out of your system, all of your feeling comes back like a truck hit you. It was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. I was so swollen from the medication. I was kind of waddling around the room to get like some blood flow, try to reduce the swelling. I was in so much pain. I had to like, you know, hand pump with my alarm going off every two hours because I didn't have Maisie there to wake me up and latch. So as my phone's going off every two hours, I'm trying to like pump for at least 20 minutes on each side while trying to rest, get my sleep. I am only getting drops in this hand pump, which is kind of heartbreaking, but every drop counts. And breastfeeding is not the easiest thing off the bat. It did get better, thankfully. So I was finally able to see Maisie and I went, it's like I went with my husband, I'm like waddling down the hallway to the nursery. I haven't even seen her yet since we like just got to the postpartum room, spent like maybe an hour or two there till the nurse came, so I'm feeling very empty. I'm finally going to the nursery and there she is in her little little box, her little incubator. Let's see her little goggles taped to her face. My husband told me that she was so hungry. They have those little like pre-made formula bottles that she sucked down one of those immediately when she got to the NICU, which made me feel really bad because I was like, wow, she was that hungry and I couldn't even feed her. So I felt really bad about that, but it's okay. She's fine. And I was able to like, you know, put my little hands in there and say hi. And I did get to feed her a bottle for a while. And she was there under her lights. She had to stay there for 12 hours when she needed 24 hours, but that's a whole other story that we're gonna get to. So I spent most of the day Kind of hanging out with Maisie and then I would go, you know, pump, bring them whatever I pumped and keep my alarm going, walk around the room, try to get my sleep. I'd have to walk back to the room to go eat during meals and, you know, use the restroom, try and get some sleep and whatnot. So that was like the first couple hours after birth. So she 
is there all, like during the day into the nighttime, right? So at night, I still have my alarms going and whatnot. And I remember I woke up, this is the first like 24 hours, the first night after giving birth. I wake up, I'm in so much pain. I like waddle myself over to the bathroom. I'm swollen and just bleeding, crying my eyes out because of how much it hurts and I can't do anything. So I hit the call nurse button in the bathroom and I'm sitting there for a minute and I hear nothing, nobody has shown up. So I'm like hitting the button. I'm not kidding you for several minutes until somebody finally walks in. The nurse opens the bathroom door and sees me sitting there bloody crying and goes, oh, and then walked away. So she walks away. I'm very confused. I'm like, I'm sorry. Did you just not see me crying here? I really need help. I just hit this button for like three minutes straight. A new nurse comes rushing in. She immediately like grabs the water bottle, starts cleaning me off. She grabs all the stuff. She's like spraying me down and helping me up, helping me get dressed and whatnot. She was absolutely amazing, that woman. Thank goodness for her. She even came back like the next day to ask how I was doing and checked in on me and she was great. Postpartum is hard. It's painful. It's not easy. So I went back to sleep. I'm trying to keep up with pumping every two hours. Thankfully my husband actually got a call while we were sitting in postpartum and he actually got hired for a new job which is really cool. That comes up later. So I walk over to the nursery, say good morning, and like handed them my bottle with like it's like a centimeter of colostrum. So I was able to like feed her and we were able to do a little skin to skin and I tried to like nurse her and the nurse was really helpful and got me like a nipple shield and was like helping us and stuff even though I still wasn't really producing a lot. So she was under the lights um, for like an hour or so after that. And then we were able to bring her over to the postpartum room with us and we began the discharge process. Now, I mentioned in my birth video that my doctor from my OB's office that I went to for prenatal care did not deliver. My daughter was not there at my birth. It was the doctor who was on call who delivered me. So my OB, when we went to get Maisie from the nursery and bring her over to postpartum. First time I had ever met this man, walks up to me and goes, what's wrong with baby? Yeah, that was the last time we ever wasted my time with that guy. As we start the discharge process, I got my flu shot. Discharge took like an hour or so because there's a lot of paperwork you have to sign. We finally made it out. We drove home. Now, the biggest part about my postpartum experience, I have to explain to you our living situation. It is a bit funky and complicated, although it did work for the time, but hear me out. We lived in a garage. So you know how you have like the three car garages, but they're split up. So it's like you have the big garage and then the smaller one for like one car or like your bikes and stuff that had been converted into a room with like a bathroom and a closet. That's it. That's what we lived in. So we had this one little like window that we were able to put an air conditioner in because it was extremely hot that summer. Then we had TV, bed, a shelf with our mini fridge and microwave and trash can and clothes and stuff. Her bassinet was directly next to our bed right next to her dresser with our clothes and her diapers and changing table and then we had a bathroom and that was that. So I had to walk across the driveway into the backyard to where my mom lived in the back house which was a one room, one bedroom, like little apartment, granny flat back house, you know. We'd go over there to use her kitchenette food and I would just hang out there because it was easier with trying to pump and like you know make food clean up and whatnot. So I would take my diaper caddy that had like my breast pump, 
all my postpartum stuff in there, I would have to make sure that I brought my Perry bottle with me because I kept forgetting it in between both bathrooms and then I had to ask my husband if he could go out and buy me another one because I kept forgetting it and then I would have to like rush over. So I would take my diaper caddy full of our stuff, take Maisie, we'd go over to my mom's little back house and then she would like sleep in her bassinet and I would change her there and then use my electric pump, which is how I finally got my milk to come in, which was a hand-me-down, thankfully. Most of our stuff was either gifted to us from our friends and family or was a hand-me-down that was gifted to us, which is very grateful because we could not afford a lot of baby stuff at the time. And my amazing husband would go to work, my mom would go to work, I would spend the day in my mom's house with Maisie and I would just put a little blanket down on the couch for her to do her tummy time. And that was how we spent our day and I would walk back over to our little garage room and because we did not have a baby bath, I had to use the NICU was a whole other story, but anyway, I had a little bucket to wash my pump parts that I got from the NICU. I would sit her in the little bucket with the warm water, wash her little noodly newborn body off in there, and then like just move her over to the changing table and then dress her. And that was really difficult with like trying to heal postpartum and not really having a place to like put her to bathe her. So sometimes I would try to like bathe with her, but that wasn't always the easiest thing. And when you're still like bleeding and you have to like clean up your open wound down there and it's you have to clean out your stitches you're still bleeding you have to make sure you're not getting blood everywhere but you have this little noodly newborn and you're like leaking everywhere it's it's a mess get a newborn bathtub trust me you need one so when we first brought her home though and she was in her bassinet our mattress was just on the ground so my incredible husband went to Home Depot and bought some wood and with a hand saw and just an electric drill, he built us a bed frame. So as sweet as my husband is, he would go to work every day and then he would come home, bring me like flowers and stuff. I would try to like cook him up some food really quick so he could eat before he goes to bed because he worked construction. So he would go in the morning, hard labor all day he'd come home and like knock out I'm like, with a baby all day I'm tired I'm trying to heal and nurse and yep that was crazy as I mentioned she was only under the light for 12 hours when she needed 24 hours so her first well baby visit one week after she got out of the hospital I did not have a license. We had one car that my husband had to use for work. So my mom got off of work early to come home and take us to the doctor's office. I called them to tell them we might be a little bit late. She's like, don't worry about it. You have a 15 minute grace period. We showed up one minute late and she told me to reschedule the appointment. So I told her it needed to be as soon as possible because baby is jaundice. She changed her mind and said, oh, well, if baby's jaundice, then baby needs to be seen. The second the doctor walked into the room, she says, when you leave here, you're going to take her straight to the emergency room and put her back under the lights. She's too jaundice. That was quite the shock. So I texted my husband to tell him how her well baby visit went and that we needed to bring her back to the ER. So what that first week of us thinking that she was like a pretty chill baby, even though she had jaundice and it was kind of not really going away, even though I'm like holding her in front of this giant window so she's in the sunlight every day. Cause they say the sunlight helps get rid of jaundice, which is the whole point of putting them under the lights in the NICU, but it just wasn't working. She just kept getting more yellow and yellow. She looked like a little squash when we brought her in for her well baby visit. It was scary. I remember sitting in the emergency room and my husband asked me what was wrong and I was like, she looks like a dead hunk of cheese. Like, I'm sorry to be morbid, but she just looks like this wither, like 
it's sad. Like, I'm watching my child die right now. This is horrible. So that was her first swell baby visit. Now, when she was, like, a couple days old, we've been home for, like, a couple days, I call my OB's office and tell them that I think my stitches might be infected. And she says, doctor's at the hospital right now, so if you go to the ER, he can come look at you. I'm like, okay, great. Good to know. I tell my husband, we leave baby with my boss for a minute. I go to the ER. They bring me into triage. The chair was broken, so I couldn't like lay down or be comfortable at all. I just had to sit there very uncomfortably while this doctor just poked and like ripped open my stitches and then goes, you're fine. I'll just prescribe you some antibiotics just in case so they don't get infected. Yeah, so it took about four weeks for me to heal from postpartum. I was not a crazy person. I did not even attempt sex till like maybe two months postpartum and that shit hurt real bad. Sex was very painful after birth, I remember. Like the first couple times, it was not, f I, do not I don't really remember sex even being fun after Maisie was born to be honest with you. I don't think it got better until after Veda. Just to be honest with you, I had never taken any type of birth control before having Maisie, so I was considering getting on like some type of birth control afterwards, so I was trying to look at something that would be easy, you know, very low on hormones, wouldn't affect my milk supply that much, so I chose a low dose of progesterone and figured I would try Nexplanon so that way I don't ever forget about taking like a pill or anything. So I went to Plant Parenthood and got Nexplanon. It made me so sick. I was laying in bed in pain, shaking, unable to eat. I lost so much weight. It dried up my milk supply. That birth control, like, I'm not kidding, almost murdered me. Every time I would go see someone, their immediate response was, why are you so, like, bony? Why are you, why are you a skeleton? And it was because of that birth control. It really affected me negatively. So I had it removed, avoided birth control, <laughs> which is probably what resulted in that little one over there. The speeding was okay. You know, I had his ups and downs, so. How was that? We just, yeah, we would go to sleep in our little room in the garage and take all of our stuff in the morning over to my mom's little house and hang out, do her tummy time. And I'd make dinner my husband and I would eat, go to sleep. That's pretty much that. So there's my experience as a teen mom with postpartum. It was rough. It wasn't easy. Postpartum with induction compared to natural, extremely different. Being in a house compared to living in a little garage room, extremely different. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> Not the best time of my life. Definitely learned a lot though, and grew a lot. And the NICU is a whole other story. We can talk about that a different day. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to my story. I would love to know what your postpartum experience was like, if maybe you learned anything from me. Don't forget to take your vitamins and drink your water. Stay groovy, my loves.